All right, so are you wondering wire cages, solid floor cages, or ground cages, which one's the best for quail? That's what we're going to talk about in today's video and clear that up for you. Hey, welcome back to another Slightly Redneck video. Again, my name's Chris. Today's question came from a viewer by the name of George Ray, who watched my last rabbit video on wire cages for rabbits. He asked, what about quail? So that's what we're going to talk about today. What's the best cage material to use for quail? Are wire bottom cages like I use okay? Or should you go with a solid bottom cage? Or should you go with a ground floor? Leave them on the ground. Well, I did some research on this topic and I found that there's really not much research been done on it. Uh, there's a couple of studies uh, that have been done and they didn't really show any kind of conclusive evidence. Basically the bottom line is wire cages are really not a problem for quail. As long as you're using a small enough gauge wire or a small enough, I should say square mesh uh, wire. This is a I think it's half inch, or no, it's quarter inch, I believe, hardware cloth. Works out just great. You don't want to put them in one inch by two inch square. Those are too big of holes, or feet fall through, you end up with kind of problems with their feet. That's the biggest real concern though with cage material for quail is feet problems. Okay, now if you're using a cage that has a solid bottom to it, you're gonna have to put some kind of litter in there. Um, wood shavings, uh, straw, uh, something along that line. You want it fairly deep. The biggest problem with that is that uh, the droppings build up within there and the quail are walking all night. And what you're going to end up with a lot of times is uh, feces and things that clumps around their feet and, and clumps up in, in balls around their feet basically. And that can cause all kinds of problems from uh, sore you know, foot infections, all kinds of things. So you're going to have to change that out quite frequently. And that also means you won't be able to, um, you'll, you'll need to use a much, much bigger cage. You won't be able to, I, I don't want to say pack the quail in because you don't really want to pack the quail in, but you won't be able to get as many quail in that cage as you do in a wire bottom cage because the droppings fall right through and that allows you to stack your quail a little bit denser and it's nothing that I'm not saying overcrowd your quail that's not what I mean by that um, but in this cage here I have about 15 quail they get along just great this cage would not hold 15 quail if it was a solid bottom I think I'd be lucky to get away with five quail in this cage if it was a solid bottom with uh, deep litter in it so that's the same thing when it comes to ground dwelling too is that you want you, you need a much, much bigger cage space for your birds. In fact, you'd be better off setting your cages up or your, your I guess it wouldn't be a cage, it'd be an aviary at that point um, if they're on the ground, setting it up in partitions where you can rotate your birds through. So you leave them in one section for, oh, I don't know, a week or two, a couple of weeks, and then you move them to the next section, you leave them there for a couple of weeks, and while you're doing that, that section has a chance to dry out, to all that stuff to get you know all the droppings to uh, be eaten by the microbes and those kinds of things in the dirt and, and basically self-clean itself and then you move them to another section your only other alternative is you're going to be in there about every week turning that stuff over and cleaning it out and redoing it uh, which is a lot of extra maintenance that's the biggest reason I use a wire cage I have had no problems with foot injuries but I did read a couple of people that said that when they used wire cages they did have a couple of problems with quail feet on the bottom of them they would rub look like they had sandpaper rubbed on them I watch my quails feet pretty closely I keep an eye on them I've had no problems whatsoever and I'm a little bit inclined to think that that may be more of a genetic problem than a, than a problem with the cage because I read the same thing about people that are keeping their quail on the ground or in solid bottom with deep litter floor, uh, that they had the same kinds of problems from their quail from time to time. And if you find a bird, one particular bird that's having problems with that, you might want to remove it from your flock or your cubby, so to speak, so that you don't have those problems passed on to future generations. Another concern about ground cages, they're much more prone to get disease, uh, bacteria, um, those kinds of things, but again, that's probably going to be dependent a little bit on your part of the country where you live in, or your part of the world, I should say, where you live, if that stuff is pre prevalent in your ground. Um, me living in town here with not a lot of, I mean, there's some wildlife here, there's hawks, there's raccoons, there's coyotes come up nearby sometimes, some of those kinds of things. Probably not a huge issue here, though, because I don't have a ton of that. If you live out in the country, outside of town where you have a lot more wildlife in your area, they're going to carry a lot more disease with them, a lot more bacteria is going to come with them. You may have a little bit more of a risk of that. But, you know, it's something to test out. And, you know, you may or you may not have problems with it. It's just something to be aware of. Another thing about solid bottom floors is that quail do have a tendency, um, if it gets wet, they're going to hang out in that wet section and that alone can cause problems with their feet. Those are just a couple of things to be concerned about. If you want to put the maintenance into it, I think a ground dwelling cage is fantastic for quail. They like it. Uh, they, they enjoy going around scratching on the ground. They, um, they enjoy 
um, being able to pick the bugs and those kinds of things out of the grass and it's free food for them so it's a great option for you it's just a lot more maintenance and you're going to need a much much bigger cage in order to do that one more concern with a wire bottom cage is with any animal you keep in a wire bottom cage including my rabbits whatever you're going to have to make sure that you put some kind of resting mat in there now i put um i'll pull you in closer and we'll take a look but i put sandboxes in here for the quail to get in and they're probably all they're all in the sandbox right now because i'm over here talking and they went in the other section to hide from me but regularly they don't really hang out in those sandboxes very much you can see all my jumbos well you can't see them because they're off camera but they're all outside of the, the sandbox. They tend to go in there, they tend to lay their eggs in the sandbox. Um, they'll go in there and they'll dust bath every once in a while or scratch around and pick at it. But for the most part, they hang out in this open wire section. So it leads me to think that, you know, they really kind of prefer the open wire section, the ventilation that comes with it probably. All right, as I open this up, you're probably gonna see them all scattered to the other side. As you can see they're all sitting in the sandbox right now, like I said, because I was over the other side talking and they were hiding from me. Gives them a place to hide. And that's another good thing, whether you're using a ground dwelling cage or a, a wire bottom cage like this or, you know, a flat bottom, whatever. Give them places to hide. Give them places where they can get behind, get out of sight and feel a little bit more comfortable. Um, I did staple up some, uh, you probably can't see that on camera. But um, on the top here, I did put a, an old feed sack. I just cut it open and stapled it to the top so that's solid, kind of preparing for winter a little bit. Um, but this is what I'm using. This is just a dropping pan, and I don't know if you can see it on camera, but it's just a dropping pan that I would normally put under a cage. I want to say it's 24 by 24, uh, 2 feet by 2 feet. And um, I just fill it with sand. And it stays pretty clean. They don't really do too much as far as their droppings in there. Uh, they do lay most of their eggs in there. So usually when I come out, I open this up, almost all their eggs are laid in this sandbox, which makes it really nice and convenient to pick them up. So that's another reason to use it. But this also, for the most part, it gives them somewhere to get off the wire. If, uh, if, they, if they're not having a good time on the wire, if their feet are bothering them or something like that, they can get off the wire. I'll show you what I'm using as a sandbox uh, for this one. You got three of them in there right now. Okay, this is just a standard nursery tray for like starting seeds. It's a 1020 tray. Cheap, easy to find, and it's working pretty well for these guys. I used a bigger one in the other hutch just simply because I had more room in there. I think that about sums it up for this video. So I appreciate you guys leaving me a comment below. Let me know what you think of this, what you're doing, what other experiences you have, and what things you might like to see discussed in another video in the future. Thank you all for watching, and as always, God bless.